I'm in northwest Victoria at a place called Boundary Bend. And not that you could tell from this beautiful wetland behind me, but I am on one of Australia's premier olive groves, home to Cobram Estate Extra Virgin Olive Oils. The team at Cobram Estate are going to show me what best practice sustainable extra virgin olive oil production looks like and the difference it can make. Leandro, why are olives considered an ideal sustainable crop for Australia? In a sense, olives are a bit like uh, the gum trees of the Mediterranean. It's a tree that is really well adapted to handle drought. It's a very efficient user of water, also use of fertilizer, particularly nitrogen and, and phosphorus. It is a carbon sink, and at the same time, olive oil is one of those superfoods. It's by far probably the best and the healthiest of all the fats uh, you know, available in the world. We're obviously very interested in your approach to sustainability, but where does sustainability sit in terms of priorities for Cobram Estate? Sustainability is an absolute priority for us. You know, we started as, as farmers trying to do the right thing from applying good horticultural practices, but that approach evolved with things like our approach to biodiversity and having the corridors of native vegetation to support fauna. And we're still learning. Where we are now is hopefully just one step of the way from where we want to be in, in a few years' time. Ruth, I can't even imagine how complex it is managing this olive grove, but how do you ensure you're looking after the land as well as maximising the yield? We do a lot of things to improve the organic matter and organic carbon in the soil because it really sustains a lot of life in the soil and the biology. We don't do any cultivation, no tillage. Uh, everything that we prune from the trees gets returned to the soil. We also like the biodiversity that that uh, encourages and that's really important for pest and disease management. We're also phasing out any insecticides that are, can damage any beneficial insects and these insecticides are very soft on the environment, which is fantastic. The fact that Australia is so isolated, it helped us as well because the main pests of olives, which are the olive moth and the olive fly, are not present in Australia. So we really don't need to use chemicals. And the beautiful wetland on the property, it is full of biodiversity. You developed that. Yes, that's a great project and a really great outcome. And that's to protect the waterways around here, which in this case is the Murray River. Um, and it's been a fantastic result. Another key aspect of sustainability is waste reduction. So how much of the olive tree actually gets used? You'll be amazed with this. <laughs> of all our operations here, with the large amount of uh, olives that we harvest and the oil that we produce, actually, even if we include bottling, only 0.1% of all our outputs actually end up in landfill. Uh, everything else gets somehow used and recycled. You know, in the case of the peat, we managed to separate the peat and it's a fantastic source of renewable energy. Right, so the pit is the olive from the centre of the olive and uh, in the processing it gets chopped up into these uh, little chips. This has the same calorific value as brown coal. Really similar, yeah, so it's very, burns really hot and it's really clean. Leandro, we know that climate change is a huge challenge facing the entire agricultural sector, but tell me about the olive tree and how it has a role in reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Every litre of olive oil sinks about 10 kilos of carbon dioxide, which means that 40 trees like this one will offset the carbon footprint of one person, or if we think about the 2.5 million trees that we have here in Australia, that will be really offsetting the carbon footprint of a football stadium, about you know, 65,000 people, you know, medium-sized city. And, and the way that it does it is actually quite simple. It's through the photosynthesis, taking the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, putting it into the fruit, and also into more leaves. So then we recycle a lot of those leaves, you know, through pruning and mulching, and a lot of that fruit through composting the remainings of the fruit after we extracted the extra virgin olive oil. So the properties of olive trees can help to reduce the CO2 in the atmosphere, but there's other factors as well, right? But the way that you manage them also have an impact. You know, if, you, if you try to minimise the use of machinery, you try to minimise the sources of energy that actually goes into it, being very efficient in the use of water and fertiliser, they all contribute to reduce your footprint and, and make really the most of this amazing tree. Here's the focaccia. Oh, thanks, Matt. That's lovely. Um, there's your little chicken oh, Brilliant. Amazing. Thank you. Ruth, look at all this amazing produce. We often hear that extra virgin olive oil has so many health benefits. It's true what they say, right? Absolutely. As well as being an amazing, tasty and nutritious food, olive oil is packed full of antioxidants. And these have um, antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory properties that are really good for us and really good for our heart health. 
Ruth, understanding the olive plant as you do and how it's such a sustainable crop, what role does it play in the challenge to feed a growing global population? This amazing tree is hardy, it's drought resistant, it's productive, it's healthy for us and it's healthy for the planet.